Good morning. Welcome to the prayer porch. It's good to have you out here this morning. I, um, I'm just glad you're here. This is where I come in the morning just to grab a verse, put it on my heart so that I can just carry that through my day and let it sustain me so that I, because the Lord tells us to eat, taste, and see that it is good. And to write his word on our hearts so that we may not sin against him. So that we can keep our, our line, we can keep alignment, we can keep wisdom, we can keep discernment. Because the only way we get that is aligning it in him. We can't do that with what other people tell us. We have to do it in him. So I encourage you to go grab your scripture, grab the Bible, and sit down with us. And let's have a little bit of a morning coffee talk over God. Lord, I love you and I praise you. I pray in this day that you just enrich my conversation with you. May my conversation be never ceasing, as Peter said, pray without ceasing. If this is the will of God, Lord, teach me to do that. Teach me to pray without ceasing so that I may see through your eyes, hear with your ears. God, use knowledge that's beyond my understanding because it's your wisdom and discernment and that your spirit would take control of my tongue and my heart. I love you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I um, When I came down this morning, when I had been looking at my scripture and just saying, God, feed me. What do we have for breakfast this morning? Uh, he brought me to a verse in Jeremiah that I, I've always known was there. But it's, as a matter of fact, it's underlined. It's marked up in my Bible. But it's one that I have not revisited in a long time. And I needed to. Because it's one of those small but mighty powerful punches. Because I remember when in my classroom when I'm teaching and one of the um, Chinese, uh, it was Chinese, Japanese, an Asian um, tale that would, I would, was a tale of wisdom, a um, fable. And it talked about how a very wise man had come and his fate was sitting there and they said to him, they said, your life depends on the fact if you can tell me if this bird in my hand is alive or if it's dead. And the gentleman says, I can't tell you that. All I can say is that my fate lies in your hands. Meaning a symbolism because he said, if you take that bird and I say it's alive, you're gonna snap its neck and you're gonna tell me I am dead. If it tell you that it's dead, then you're gonna open your hands and let it fly so that you determine my fate. So whatever is going to happen, really you are determining. And that's where our scripture comes out today. Because well, a lot of us want to, we're in a world where we want to blame. I want to blame somebody. It's blame my childhood, blame my parents, my grandparents, my great. 20 years ago, this happened or 200 years ago, this happened. We always want to blame somebody. We want to blame somebody and make that the reason that we are, that are justified. This is why we are what we are. Yes, things affect other things, but there's a point where you determine. You determine what's before you. You determine to take and make excuses or you determine to take those excuses and make expectations. I don't, just because of this, I don't have to be this. I can choose better. I can choose better. And um, there's a scripture verse, it's so powerful because it goes back to when I was, as I start every morning when I do this prayer porch and I say, you have to get into this word. You have to find it for yourself. You can't determine what your spiritual walk is based on someone else. And you're not going to build a relationship with Jesus because of someone else. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like in my family, I have um, my nephew has worked really close hands with the uh, fan club for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And there's a lot of them, he'll just talk by name. He's got pictures of him with them and that type thing. And it's like me saying, oh, I know them because my nephew knows them. So it's all in the family. Well, you know what? I may be able to say, hey, I am this, I'm his aunt, but at the same time, that's not gonna, that doesn't build my relationship with them. That doesn't build my relationship. You have to build that relationship. And there's a scripture that is pretty much to the point. This is one of those that when you get here today, you need to go and write it on a post-it note and stick it on your mirror because it's a constant reminder and it makes you understand why Paul said, pray without ceasing. That this is God's will. Make sure that you're constantly going before God on everything. There's nothing too big and nothing too little to talk to God about. God and I laugh, we cry. I tell him silly things. And, oh, goodness, God, I, you won't believe what I just did today. This is this. And this. Because that's who he is. He wants to be a part of all of that. 
but we're reminded in Jeremiah. Now in the book of Jeremiah, if you look through this, all these things are happening to Israel. All these things, good and bad. A couple chapters before there were people where Babylonia took out all of their, for their fine um, workmen and the, the, even the king's son takes them all out. And God tells Jeremiah, you know what? Those are the figs that are actually good and I'm gonna preserve them because these down here are getting rotten and I'm gonna get rid of them because I'm tired of them just making false prophecies and just making a mess of everything that I have. And so here we are a couple chapters after that. And Jeremiah makes a statement that is so powerful. So I want you to go to Jeremiah 29. And I want you to go to Jeremiah 29 verse 7. And it's actually the end of verse 7. The beginning of the verse says, and uh, he's continuing a thought from before because he's telling them what to do. But in basically, he's giving them instruction. If you want to turn things around, here's what you need to do. Okay? So, because it says, this is what the Lord has, says to all the captives. These are the ones that he said, you're my good figs. You're my good figs. And I'm going to preserve you. And I'm going to make something happen to you in this day that seems like a disaster. But if you don't want to get caught up in what's going on around you, you need to fix your eyes on me. And that's basically what all of this beginning says. But this is how he wraps it up. And this is a powerful verse. He says, pray to the Lord for it. Pray to the Lord for these promises that he has for you that are good. Because, and here it is, pray to the Lord for it, it being the, the prayer itself, its welfare. Pray to the Lord for it and for its welfare. Pray to the Lord for your promises in him and your welfare in him. And your prayers will determine your welfare. In other words, it's a give and take. Your prayer life, your welfare, they have to be joined. They have to be one. They have to come together. Because how you pray is going to determine your welfare. Take out prayer, your welfare is going to sink. Put in prayer, and you're going to be strong. And the promises that God has for you are going to be very clear to you. And you're going to be understand things beyond your understanding. And promises that you can't fathom would have ever come true will start unfolding before you. But they have to be one. Your prayer and your welfare have to be one. So in reality, you hold your fate because you can hold on to God or you can let him go. And if you hold on to him, you're going to find his promises of yes and amen. And the way to hold on to him is through your prayer life. You let that prayer life dwindle, or I only want other people to pray for me. I don't pray to him myself. I send other people. This is going to start to fail. Your welfare is in your hands if your hands are folded in prayer. Take this weekend and focus on prayer. Focus on prayer, and your life will start to change for the better. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on the prayer porch on Monday.